Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. Yeah, so guys, we have to talk today about the tsunami, which is Omicron. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to say thank you and welcome, and really thank you so much. I see I have many new subscribers since the last time I put up a video, and maybe it was because of my ask, so I'm going to just ask again for those of you who have not subscribe to my channel, but you like my content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Most people know now that my channel, I do it as a public service. So most of the items that I review in the way of uh, N95s and face masks and things like that are, I usually purchase them out of my own pocket. I have been lucky enough to receive some of those from retailers and manufacturers, and that helps me out a great deal. Now, when I recommend any of these products, and I put a link down below in the description box, those are not affiliate links, so I don't make any commission off of things that have to do with people's health, safety, well-being. I don't want to prey on people's fears and I don't want the room for bias that commissions would create. So that's why the subscriber numbers are just so important to me because that's the way for me to go forward. It's just to grow my channel and that's it. So uh, I will thank you in advance. If you know anybody who you think might find my content helpful, please go ahead and share my content as, along with that message and thank you in advance for that as well. Yeah, so I'm going to be rocking the glasses a little while here, guys. I'm going to try not to give you the halo light reflection in them. But I'm waiting. I finally am getting vision coverage. So I'm at my last few of the box of daily contact lenses and I have to ration them. So I'm going to be wearing the glasses and I'm, I'm outside today because it's just a nice day out. And I feel like who couldn't use a little sunshine? And so I think I'm getting just enough light here where I'm going to get some uh, a little bit of a tint here. So I'm sorry about that, too. But Anyway, let's talk about Omicron because as of yesterday, from the day before recording this video, we had a daily case count of new cases recorded at over 400,000. I think it was 440,000. That's like almost a half a million new infections. And I think our previous record on a daily count was something like 200 and something thousand. So, I mean, like almost double, maybe more than double. And I, I can't even get my head around a number like that. It's at the point where I don't think anybody doesn't have several people that they know. If you haven't been infected by yourself already, you know several people that are currently infected or have recently been infected. And, you know, it's, it's really very concerning. Now, I'm grateful that it seems that everybody that I know has had a mild case, and it seems that it comes and goes quickly. The incubation is quicker. The period that there's people are sick is quicker. And I know that it might not be an inherently less dangerous or less virulent strain, but it might be that we just have so much immunity in our population already that that's why we're not getting, you know, all the ICU admissions, certainly far less in the way of hospitalization. There's a total decoupling of, you know, the curve between incidence of infection and hospitalization and ICUs and certainly deaths. So that's all great news. I still am concerned about long haulers. And I've said all along for me, because really the mortality rate with this disease is so low anyway, that this, this argument that it's nothing to be concerned about because the survival rate is so high, I think it's just flawed because it fails to look at the morbidity. It only looks at the mortality. And the morbidity is extreme when it comes to COVID. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be causing that in with Omicron right now, but we have yet to hear about long haul. So I suspect in maybe February or so, we're going to hear who's in the long haul clinics and, you know, what the observations are. And uh, I, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping, I hope not unrealistically, that one of these days we're going to get to the point where the risk of long haulers is really minimal. It's maybe like any other virus. There are often post-viral syndromes, but at some point we'll go on with our lives and we'll get our vaccines and, you know, maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't, kind of like we've been treating the flu all this time. And, you know, we'll be able to just really breathe a big sigh of relief. But I don't like to take my eye off that ball of long haul uh, because that can be devastating to people. And... I think we're going to get there. Anyway, I just want to talk about a couple of observations, like just the thoughts that I've had based on the handful of people I know who have recently been diagnosed with COVID. And in my area, it's all Omicron. Now, I personally know several people, and I think without exception, they all had to test multiple times before they got a positive PCR result. And I don't mean multiple times, meaning a home test and then a rapid antigen test and then a PCR. 
I mean, these people had more than one PCR test before they got a positive result. And I think it's really tricky because with Omicron, especially if you're vaccinated, I think the course of the disease is so quick. That's like on this day, you're positive. On that day, you're positive. The next day, you're going to be negative. You don't catch it exactly at the right time. But because some of these people did test in such a tight period of time so many times, I started to wonder whether Omicron is somehow evading the nasal PCR tests. And I'm going to get to that in a moment because it turns out that the next day I did read something um, about that. More on that in just a moment. So the first obvious glaring conclusion here is that we have many more cases than we have recorded cases. And I say that because I don't think most people are going to go get tested multiple times. In fact, I think many people start developing cold system symptoms, get a test and find they're negative and then say, OK, that was the rule out. And then they go on with their lives and say it's just a cold because I ruled out COVID. And, you know, what I've noticed just from the people around me is that that would be really easy to do and be wrong because, like I said, everyone that I know who's come down with it recently and it's been Omicron. Um, has tested multiple times before they got a positive result. And that's even after they were symptomatic. Yeah, that's kind of sobering. So for that reason, I think there are many more cases than we think. The other reason I think there are many more cases than we think is because a lot of people, if, if they get a positive home test, probably everybody, if you get a positive home test, you're not going to bother going to some place and getting a PCR that then gets sent to your State Department of Health and gets recorded. So we're missing all those people as well in these counts. Yeah, so 440,000, no, it's actually more. Isn't that something to get your head around? Now, the next issue, which I mentioned briefly about whether the PCR is accurate with Omicron, whether there's some issue there, and that's particular to this variant. I finally did find one article. I'm going to try to find I couldn't find it again when I looked for it. So I'm going to try to find it and link it down below in the description box for anybody who hasn't heard about this yet. There was a study done at the university in Cape Town in South Africa, and they compared nasal swabs for PCR to saliva test. A saliva test sounds a lot more comfortable than a PCR, by the way. Spitting in a cup? Yes. Well, what they found was that the saliva test was a lot more accurate with Omicron, and in fact, the nasal PCR misses some cases. So I thought, aha! I had noticed that already from the microcosm of people around me. So I don't know if that's going to become widely accepted. I don't know if we're going to change the way we test. We're kind of set up the way we're set up. I think it would be a lot easier to do saliva testing. I hope that that gets some further study and some clarification. And if it's the case, it, I mean, I hope that we get to the point where we're doing the right thing to get the most accurate results that we can. But as fast as this thing is, and that's the good thing about it, I, maybe by the time we get there, you know, we're kind of slow. Um, maybe the curve will already be dropping precipitously. So I, I kind of hope it's going to drop precipitously soon. I know it will drop precipitously. That's the way this thing behaves. It's so rapid. You know, let's hope that we get there very quickly because I mean, like everybody's sick, right? Yeah, I felt badly for some people. I, I saw some comments put up in the Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy Facebook groups thread where somebody had said that they were just getting ready to start their holiday. I guess it was like the weekend of Christmas. And several people in the family tested positive and somebody else put up something like, what should I do if I'm the one taking care of everybody else and I have COVID? Like, I assume that you have little ones then and you have to cook and whatever. And, you know, I, I thought to myself, I've obviously wear an N95 and do everything you can, but, you know, it seems like it's almost a lost cause uh, if everybody's in the same household. So I'll be interested in seeing if I get a follow up and from that person, if they post anything about what happened ultimately. Uh, I'm sure this is a problem that lots of people have all over the country and particularly in densely populated places like New York City right now. The caseload is just crazy. So what am I doing right now? What are we doing right now? We're pretty isolated. I'm trying to spend a lot of time outside, not because I'm worried about being near the people that I live with because we're isolated here and we're in our own little bubble. I just think it's a good thing for the mood to get outside and get some sunshine and get some vitamin D. Again, I think it is important and I have said all along very early on when this pandemic had just gotten started we knew very little about it i had made a recommendation of having vitamin c vitamin d zinc and elderberry the elderberry kind of dropped off my radar screen like, like over a year ago but i have continued making sure that i get enough c d and zinc i test my vitamin d level there are all different arguments for keeping it on the high end keeping it on the low end i keep mine a little more on the high end especially for something like this there are risks benefits either way uh, my last vitamin d level i drew was 75 and I try to spend time outside just because I think it's uplifting for the mood. And I try to spend some time meditating. I try not to have really any contact when I have to go do a curbside pickup for groceries or when I have to get near anybody. I wear an N95 with pretty much 
no exceptions anymore. I know I've said that the DNA, given that the medium is very much rivaling an N95, I get a really great fit with it, but I have just gone to wearing the N95s now. Um, I have done several reviews on lots of different respirators, so I'm going to link the playlist right here, and you can take a look at those and see if there's something that might work for you. I, I tend to be reaching for the duckbill respirators. I do use eye protection, so please don't underestimate the importance of eye protection. Ready Mask, which is the stick-on N95 that I reviewed before, I'm going to link that video as well. They also have something that includes eye protection that is completely sealed all the way around. I imagine this thing looks just crazy, but I am going to be reviewing that in the hopefully in the very near future. I haven't received the product yet, but I will be reviewing that for you guys once I've had a chance to try it out. I also have some news that Sonovia has come out with children's masks. I don't imagine most of you with little kids, if you get them to wear masks correctly, I certainly doubt you would get them to wear respirators. So the Synovia Pro, which does have the polypropylene, it has children's masks now. I don't have kids, so I really can't review these things, but I have found different people who have young children who are going to be trying them out when the kids get back to school. And we're going to be doing Zoom interview reviews that I'll put those together and give you a review on the Synovia children's product. So I hope to have that for you in the next few weeks. But yeah, we've got to wait until the kids are back in school after the new year so that they really had a chance to try them out. So in the meantime, what can I say? I, I Please stay safe. Please make sure you're vaccinated. Please make sure you're boosted. I know they say the boost wanes. That's in terms of the risk of getting infected. I don't believe that the boost wanes so much in terms of keeping your infection to be minimally symptomatic. I know that doesn't speak to the big issue that I keep talking about, which is long haulers. I can just say I'm hope that I'm optimistic that we're going to get to the point sometime. Maybe this is the variant. I don't know, but we'll get to there where long haulers is not something that we have to be so profoundly worried about. And then we can kind of go about our lives and live with COVID. But I don't know if we're there yet. I hope we are. I think we'll find out in February. In the meantime, that's how I treat this, guys. So take care of your immune health. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your nutritional health. Take care of your emotional health and take care of each other. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.